This video is a data extraction and web scraping tutorial for beginners. Now I'm going to assume that you know a little bit of Python, but we're going to keep it as simple as possible. And I'm going to use some of the most popular and my favorite Python tools as we go along. Now web scraping in itself is quite a large subject, but we're going to just scratch, scratch the surface a little bit, try and keep it as simple as we can. And we're going to code together a web scraper for a website. So when you look at a lot of basic examples, people sort of send you over to this website to have a look and to practice on. And that is all very well and good. However, I tend to prefer slightly more real websites because, you know, there's a little bit more to it uh, for a project. So this is what we're going to be doing in this video. Seeing this is an online store, this is quite a common task for people that are doing web scraping. We are going to be pulling some information from this page for these products. Now, I mentioned at the top of the video that we're going to be doing an HTML scrape, which basically means that when we are asking the server, the website for the data, we are going to be expecting to get HTML back. Now, obviously this isn't gonna work with a lot of modern websites, which are JavaScript front end. That's gonna be out of scope for this video. If you want to know whether you can do this technique on any website, the best thing that you can do is just start by looking at the website, understanding how it feels, and then coming in to inspect element. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little tool here to click on some of the information, something maybe like this price, for example. And you'll see down here that I have this element selected and it's called this really long and obscure class and then this data-ui type of sale-price. Now what I like to do is copy that information and then come over to the source of the web page, so view source, and then we're going to search in here for that. Now you can see that I have found it in this source. Now this is a good indication, not necessarily a given, but this is a good indication of the way that we're gonna to attempt to scrape this data that is gonna work. You'll also see that I have 13 of 21 matches, which means it's found an element called this 21 times, which is good for us. Okay, so we're gonna come back to the website in a minute. We're gonna start building up our code. Now, I am going to be using NeoVim to write my code, but you can, of course, use VS Code. That's absolutely fine. Any code editor you like will work. But whatever you do, I really strongly advise that you use a Python virtual environment to install your dependencies because otherwise you're going to clog up your main system and you'll have so many dependency conflicts and errors. So I'm going to start with Python dash M B E N V B E N V. Now, if you haven't done this before, it might tell you that you need to install it and that's fine. You can do that. Just follow the instructions. Now I'm on a Linux machine machine. So mine is a uh, source V E N V, which is the uh, directory we just created, uh, bin and activate, and this is going to activate my virtual environment as you can see over here. Now you'll notice that I called my virtual environment the same name as the actual module that I created it with. You can call it whatever you like, I just find this easier and simpler. So from here what we can do is we can use pip to install the things that we're going to need to actually make this program work. So I'm going to do pip3 install and I'm gonna use HTTPX. Now, a lot of people will say use requests and requests is good and there's nothing wrong with it. And if you wanna use it, you can. I think HTTPX is just a slightly more modern version and also has asynchronous capabilities for way down the line if you ever get there. So we're gonna install this. This will zip through and get that done. And then we're also going to do pip3 install selectolax. Now, again, Selectolax is a much more modern HTML parser than something like Beautiful Soup. It it has a it's backed by the C modest library, which means it's super quick at parsing. It's my preference. I use it all the time. The downside, of course, is that this is CSS selectors only. I'm okay with that. But if you like to use XPath or or whatever like or something else you can use beautiful soup the principles of this is going are going to be the same but for this example we're going to use httpx and selectolax now i've created i'm going to create a file i'm going to call it main.py i'm going to open it in my code editor here the first thing we're going to think about is what we need to import in so i'm going to import in httpx which is what we've installed and also selectolax so i'm going to do from selectolax.parsers 
we're going to import in our HTML parser like this. This is all we need to import in for the moment. Now I'm going to try and keep this as basic and as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use basic for loops and then maybe we'll think about functions at the end. I'll, ex I'll explain to you how you can expand on it. So the first thing that we need to do is grab the URL for the page, which I'm just going to grab from here. And then I'm going to come into my code and I'm going to say that our URL is going to be equal to this right here. There's another thing that I think is very important to introduce here before we even make our first request. And that's the concept of the headers that we can send with the request to the server. Now, this may or may not have any benefit in this example, uh, but it's a very good habit to get into and understanding how you can actually uh, change how the website reacts to you based on what your headers say. So I always create a headers dictionary like so. And the main one we're gonna be focusing on is the user agent like this. This is a string that usually comes with a browser that basically just the website understands, oh, hey, this is X browser and whatever operating system. Now to grab your user agent, I usually just come over to a browser and type in my uh, user agent like so, and you'll get a string like this. You can also find websites that give you different ones if you want to play with that. I would just use the one from your machine like so. So now we're ready to make our first request to the website, which is our URL. So I'm going to type in RESP for response. So this means that whatever we get back from the website, from the server, is going to be stored in this response variable. Then we'll do httpx.get and we're going to pass in our URL. Then we're also going to say that our headers is equal to the headers variable that we just created here. So I'm going to go ahead and just print out the response whilst we're here. Now you can run, I'm going to you can run this from your terminal or in VS Code you'll have the terminal underneath or you can push the run button. I'm going to be doing it this way. Just run the file however you see fit and we should get our ah, response 200 okay. So that means that this has worked and we have a response object that we can now work with. One thing that you may want to check is the status code. So I'm going to run this again and we'll see that it's a 200. That means it's a good response from the server. If you're getting something like 400, 404, that means that the page doesn't exist. 500s, 502, 503, it usually means that you've been blocked for some reason. If you're getting that with, this, with a learning example, I'd recommend just moving on to a different project so you can understand the whole concept before you start trying to figure out how to unblock yourself from certain websites that you might be trying to get data from. So what information do we actually want from this response? Uh, well, in this case, we want the text data. This is going to be the HTML. I'm going to run this and you'll see, there it is. All of this is the HTML that we just looked at on this page right here. All of this is essentially the same as what I just got back. So we can actually take this and we can look at pulling bits of information out of the HTML. For example, maybe the sale price and the corresponding uh, item name and things like that. So what I want to do is I want to actually pass this into my Selectolax HTML parser. So I'm going to say that the HTML is going to be equal to the HTML parser class response.text. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me this HTML variable that we can then query against to actually uh, find the data that we're after. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out html.css first. And this basically takes in a CSS selector and it finds the first matching one on the page for that selector and returns it to us. So I'm going to say title. And yes, this is a valid CSS selector. So let's run it again now. And we have node title. That means we now have access to whatever information is within this element. For example, text. And there we go. That's the text of the title of the page. And we can verify that over here. If you see this title just hiding in there. So we know that this is working. But the title, not that useful to us. We're not really that interested. What we are interested in is the actual product information, which is within this HTML on this page. We're going to try and find where the information is that we want to grab. So I'm in the inspect tool and I have here, we're going to hover over part of the page with the uh, this tool here, the select thing. And as you can see, this basically hovered over the whole tag, the whole uh, card, if you like, and lots of websites do this, all the products are lined up like this. So we can see right away when I hover over this, this 
this element here, this LI with this weird looking class, holds all the information for this product. Now, a lot of people will tell you, well, you can use the class to select uh, elements, which you absolutely can. But I don't always like to do that, especially when it's not human readable, because when you come back to it, you have no idea what that was supposed to be. But what I like to do is just go back up the element tree a little bit until I find one which actually looks good and makes more sense to me. So this div ID of search results, and as you can see, when I hover over it, we get all of these highlighted. So I'm gonna use this one here to then filter down and get the list items here. So we'll want to basically select all of these list items. So I'm just gonna copy this. Now to do that, I say that products is gonna be equal to html.css because we want to find all of the elements that match this selector. And it's a div and it was an ID. So for an ID with CSS selectors, you need to use the hash symbol. For class, it's a dot. And then we paste in our search results here, like so. Now this is going to basically just find all the elements that match this, but we need that LI, those list items here, because that's where the information is and we wanna get a list of them so we can loop through them. Then we need to go, okay, so under this we'll find all of the unordered list and then from here, all of the list items. So what I'll do is I'll just print out our products now and this should give us a list of elements. And as you can see, it does. So we have a list of node LIs. And these represent all of the HTML elements on this page that have this uh, selector that we chose here. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, we need to loop through this to start with because we want to get all of the information from each one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a for loop. So we'll do for product in products. And I would recommend that you use uh, the singular of the plural when you're looping through. I, I have done before for item. It's a bad habit. This is much clearer. So what we'll do is we'll just print product and we'll just double check that we've got everything that we need going on here. We should get a long list. There we go, so that's super. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's try and pull out some information. And let's come back here and we'll come and open up one of these ones and we'll just find a the name of the product. In fact, I'm just going to click on this here and we'll see that the span is a H2 and then we have a span with this class and this data dash UI. Now this is an attribute. Now we could do the class. I will try this first. We'll do uh, like this and then we'll save and we'll try running it. Okay, so we got some back. We're also getting some nuns. Uh, let's do dot text. And now we have this none type object has no attribute. And you'll see this quite a lot. And that's because we've matched some nodes that don't have this uh, element in it somehow. So what we're going to do is we must have picked up a load of other li tags, which you can see down here, there's a load of li tags that we actually did pick up because they are hidden on the page. Now this is a bit of a pain for us because of the way that I've chosen to do this. So what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna basically, we're going to go back on what I said and we're gonna do selecting it by this here. Now this is a good example of how you just need to understand how all this works and be a bit more adaptive. This is not my preferred way using funny class names like this because these can be dynamic. However, in this instance, as we saw, we were picking up a load of extra nodes which didn't have the information that we were looking for. So that's much more of a headache to sort out rather than just changing it to this. So it's going to be li and this class name here. So I'm going to run again. And I'm going to see where we're at. Okay, cool. So that has worked. And you can see that we now have all of the names for the products that are on this page working as we would hope they would. Nice and good there. So how are we gonna actually output any of this information? Well, I am just going to print it to the screen in this case, but we want it to be a bit neater than this. We wanna construct some kind of data to act, we can actually maybe do something with it in the future. And the easiest and best one in my opinion for this is to use a dictionary in Python. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new item dictionary and I'll say our item is gonna be equal to 
curly braces like this. And within here, we're gonna specify which information that we want. So I'm gonna say the first key is gonna be the product name. And we actually just pulled this information out here. So we can take this and we can paste it in here like so. That a bit tidy up. I'm just gonna zoom out one, a couple more. So it all fits on one element on the page. There we go. So we're gonna say, well, this gave us the name. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is the price. And we're basically just gonna do exactly what we did here, except we're gonna find the element that's got the price in here. So I'm gonna hover over this, and we'll see that we have this information here, span with this class, uh, which has got a gap and a name in the name. Now, this is why I don't often like these long class names like this, because that can be a real pain. Now, you can sometimes work with this, not an issue. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit up and get it from the attribute, which is actually sale price, makes a whole lot more sense. So the attribute is data-ui. So how do we do that within our CSS selector? Well, first we need to do our product.css first because we're gonna be querying the same set of HTML that we actually wanted. And I'm gonna say, well, we do want the text from this element anyway. So our CSS selector is gonna look a little bit like this. It's a span, so we need to do span first. Then we're gonna open up square brackets and we're gonna say the attribute that we want is this data-ui, data-ui. And that is gonna be equal to this sale-price, sale-price, like so. So I'm gonna save, and then we're going to print out every item that we come through and we create with our dictionary here. So we're basically printing out our dictionary. So let's run. Now you'll see that we have this none type error again, and that's because you know we found these two that worked, but the third one along doesn't seem to have this element. And as you can see, when we come here, ah, it doesn't have it here. So what can we do? Well, we can see that we have this full price and it's blocked out. So we have a few options. Now, this is getting a little bit more in depth than I was hoping, but this is really important because this is possibly one of the most common problems that you come up against when you're trying to scrape data. So I'm actually, I'm going to show you it in this video. We are going to need to use a function. So we're going to write our own function, which is basically going to encapsulate this code. And then we're going to say, but if it doesn't find this, we're going to return none. What that means is for every element where we don't have this sale price, like this one that I showed you just here, it's going to return none or whatever we choose. So I'm going to create this function up here just so it's a bit clearer and out of the way. We'll put it underneath this stuff here. So I'm going to go under here. We're going to create a new function. To do that in Python, we type DEF. And I'm just going to call this one extract text. And we're going to pass into it the selector and the HTML because this function is going to need to take in the product, which is the HTML, and the selector. HTML selector like this. So from here, we're gonna do a try and accept because we know what the error is. It's an attribute error. So we'll say try and we'll return HTML.css first and the selector dot text. And we'll then say accept and it's an attribute error, attribute error as error. And we will return, uh, we're gonna just return none in this case, so we don't need this, we don't, we don't need to do this. So what this, is mean, what this means is we're basically just moving this part up into our function, and it's saying, hey, if we can't do this, give us none. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this out of here. So instead of this part, we're just gonna get rid of that and we're gonna turn it into our function. So we'll have extract text and it needs to take in the HTML, which is product. And then the selector, which is this. We also don't need the dot text now because we're doing that within our function. I'll remove the dot text. And again, we'll remove you and we'll say extract text product and like this and save. So hopefully this isn't getting a bit too far ahead. Um, I didn't really want to cover functions so much in this, but once we've hit this point, it's really important that you understand how to get around this attribute error. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna format my code with black so it looks a bit neater 
And we're going to do run it again. OK, so now we have had no errors because we have handled that specific attribute error where it didn't find that price that we were looking for. So we can see here, this one, this item price is none. And that's because of what we've done with our function. And again, up at the top there, price none. And that's this item here. So that's going to cover it in for this video. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to like much more of the content on my channel. So I'd really, really appreciate it if you were to subscribe and check out some of the other videos. This has been as much of a sort of basic example into scraping HTML as I could come up with and as I could show you. And hopefully even with this little bit of a function, a bit of an abstraction out just to make our life easier here, Maybe you've learned something. If you have and you want to talk about this sort of thing more, I have a Discord channel, which the link will be in the video description. Jump in there, come say hello, come talk to me about this video. I'll be more than happy to hear your thoughts. Come and tell me what I did wrong and what I could do better too. I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.